Xin chào. Guten Tag. I'm here with my good friend, Vietnamese dealer, very important guy in the watch scene, also a collector, Cui Bona. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Um, How long do we know each other now? I think uh, around five or six years. So too long? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I bought many nice pieces from Cui. He has an exquisite taste. Uh, the most remarkable in my recollection was the Udmach Piquet with the Lapis Lazuli that I yes. got from you. It's a beautiful one. At the Munich Fair, that was uh, the best pickup I ever had in uh, the Munich Fair. However, you brought some watches for us to show uh, the audience today of our uh, KOV channel. So it's best we leave the drinks yes. and we get the watches. We have a special surprise here. I mainly see on first sight Rolex watches. Yes. That's your biggest love? Yes, because I have... Um, I, I'm addicted of Rolex. Why Rolex in particular? Uh, because Rolex has a big history and uh, in my starting uh, time, while I uh, start to collect watches, I have read a lot about, about the history from Rolex and there are a lot of um, famous people and important people who collect Rolex or who were Rolex on... Uh, you see on the uh, on the film on um, in, in in advertising. So I think oh, how long ago did you really start to enjoy the watches? Uh, I'm start around I think eight years ago. Eight years ago. Yeah. So when you were around forty five years old. Uh, yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> I was sixty. <laughs> Just kidding, my friend. But you're wearing a Patek Philippe. Yes, I wearing a Patek Philippe. 3800, I believe, yes. huh? Yes. And this is a dial I saw first when you posted it on Instagram. Yes. And I couldn't believe the color because it looks so chemically blue. Yes. But it's an original dial. Yes. And that's the interesting part about the 3800. It can discolor over the years. And some of the dial turn a little bit greenish, some a little bit brownish or even goldish. And this one is super, super blue. Very cool piece. How do you like my watch? I love it. Small I, wrist check. Yes, I love it. It looks very good on you, but I love diamonds. I am the... The if, diamond boss. I am the diamond boy. <laughs> 18138 is on my wrist. It's the Rolex with the diamond set lugs and diamond set bezel, except for the cartouche at the six o'clock. Furthermore, it's adorned with a uh, very cool dial. It's a hardstone dial. Do you know the dial? Yes, it's a ferret dial. Oh, you're it's, good in the stones, huh? Yes, and it's very, very nice because um, the st structure, the structure looks like um, what does it mean? A lot of diamonds, little small diamonds. True. If it, you go in the for me, it looks line. like the galaxy. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, the watches have a similar size. Of course, the three eight zero zero being the slightly large, uh, smaller size compared to the three seven zero zero, which is the jumbo. But I prefer to wear watches around 36, 37 millimeters. How is it for you? What watches do you prefer size-wise? Normally, if I wear Rolex, it's uh, the size uh, 40. So two watches, really? Yes, like sporty yes. models sporty and stuff. models and something. But um, for the vintage one, I think 36 and 37 is also very good because my wrist is also not so big because I have uh, trained a lot. I see. Yes, you and know. You, you stopped eating a lot, huh? I, see I stopped also. eating since two hours. <laughs> 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 I love that, my friend. <laughs> Show me a little bit smaller watch to start with. I see a Rolex yes. on a leather bracelet. Yeah, this is the smallest one in my collection. With a very, uh, um, very special uh, case. Wow. Yes. Florentine uh, um, work. I love the Florentine finish because yes. it's the only finish Rolex used on both the bezel as well as on the case. Yes. Because if you compare it to Bark or Morales finish, it's only the bezel. But this is very cool. Yeah. It's very simple. This watch is very simple, but the quality is, um, when I found it, I, li I like the quality of the dial and uh, the case. And it's, it's a nice dress watch. And it's especially nice to see on these uh, finishes how the case aged. So if the watch has been polished, yes. you can clearly see it. Yes. Because obviously you cannot re-assemble the, the finish on the case. Very nice though. So it's an earlier example, I believe, early 60s? Yes, it's 63. 
63 yes. when they still use the slightly more elegant uh, alpha hands yes. instead of the baton markers very nice example with the champagne dial and i figure this is a watch you wear when you dress up or yes. Uh, yes, yes. like you're wearing today with the nice sneakers yes you're going jogging jogging in a little bit uh, running not this year but i try <laughs> <laughs> i try i try to come back <laughs> very cool watch yes what's the reference of the watch uh 1502 1502. Yeah, 1502 is very special because of the... But this is even 34 millimeters, that yes. because it's the date, so it's smaller than the date just. Yes, it's the smallest in my collection, yeah. Very cool piece. Yeah. How long do you have it now? Um, around two years. Very nice yes. watch. The lady date just wants me for me too small, so I take this. You know, I like to wear either mid-size, 31 millimeters oh, on the gold bracelet, nice, yes. or I saw you also had a 28 millimeters yes. on the gold riveted oyster. That's a statement watch to wear as a guy, right? Yeah. Or you think it's a little bit feminine? No, because uh, you know the Italian guys, the cool Italian guys, were always were a very small, uh, um, so, uh, small size. True. And it looked cool. It looked but cool. you have to be a little bit Italian, I think. Yeah. Sometimes. So, sometimes, yes. Show me more watches, my friend. So the next one is um, this is very important watch for me because I have um, it's a Daytona, it's a Daytona Soladit. Also yes. a hardstone dial. Yeah. And uh, with diamonds, so the combination of diamond, gold, wild gold, and uh, I have put a, a yellow uh, strap on it. Because I only saw the yellow strap. I thought it was a beach detoner from the backside because no, no. it has the lizard strap in yellow. Yes. But it's the solar light dial. Yes, it's solar light dial. I wore this uh, watch on um, very, very important days of my life. That was uh, my, um, when I met my uh, wife. You were and wearing this? Yes. And she still fell in love with you? She still fell in love <laughs> with me, yes. And when my daughter was born, I has also wear this watch. So this is well, for me uh, the most important watch in my collection for the um, for the moments I, I wear it. You know, I can remember when I wear it. The soda light dial is funny um, because it is the only hardstone dial Rolex used with two different tones of text. Yes. So the lighter soda light dials have the black text on it and a yes. little bit darker soda light dials have the white uh, text on it. It's a very cool example with the quarters numeral uh, with the 15, 30 and 45 numerals and furthermore the diamond setting. Very, very cool piece. Yes. I like the color combination of the blue and the yellow. Yes, that's why I buy, I buy the yellow. So I have also the original in blue, but it's too much blue then. Yeah, this yeah. is a way more funky combination. Yes. Very nice example. Uh, regarding Daytona, I see one more Daytona laying there. Do you prefer the five-digit references, like the Zenit Daytonas or even the Caliber 4130? So more the in-house movement watches. I have... Um I have buy a lot of Zenit Daytonas because Zenit Daytonas, I think the aging is very nice. Because uh, the, you can see they use tritium. They yeah. use tritium. So tritium is no dial is like this, the other one. True. Uh, yeah. So every dial has aging and have uh, uh, other other um, uh, face. True. And also uh, the no, the new one is okay. It's but it's every looks same. I think. True. Yes. And this one is a Zenit tuner, uh, an, um, not inverted six. It's a, no, a normal one. So but it's 1996, 1997. Uh, yes, 1996, Yes. And the condition is uh, used, but it's unpolished. And I like the look of this gold. You know, the gold is also aging and... Such a strong look. Yes. And this one with uh, jeans and uh, maybe more uh, uh, very, very sporty, you know, you can wear it and it looks, it looks good. Because it's one of the few watches, especially in gold, so the 16528, one of the few watches that can come off as really dressy as well as sporty at the same time. For me, the Zenit Daytona is one of the few watches that I like to wear under a suit. Yes. Although it's a tool watch. Yes. Because in the end, you know, it has a chronograph function, it has a 40 millimeter sized case, the Oyster bracelet, of course, but I can even still see the case back sticker. Yes. So we use, but uh, it's still available. <laughs> yeah. So the watch uh, has been enjoyed, I can see from the scratches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you like to party with the watch, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I would, um, when I have uh, a coffee, mm -hmm. uh, I have um, do some barista, you know, you make, I make uh, some coffee <laughs> for my customer. So I would normally, you know, when I make coffee and something else, it's, it's, it's a very cool watch. It's a nice daily beater to have. For me, my preference goes to the earlier examples of the Zenit Daytona because you have the smaller baton yes. markers. Yes, yes. And on the new ones, the big markers look a little bit clumsy for me. 
Yes, the the older one, the the Word Six, is, looks more detailed, more more. Um, I have a 16528 also that is very early 1991. It has a floater uh, dial. Oh, very and nice. And what I like on that watch, not even the dial, but I like the bracelet because the clasp has the Rolex coronet over it yes, instead yes. of the full flip over clasp. But this is a very nice example, sir. Thank you. And I think for, for my collection, it's um, very important to say that I love GMTs. You know, uh, my old car have played GMT 1675. That's actually the funniest <laughs> thing. That's why I remember you from the first time we met. He has a, a very cool car with the license plate saying GMT 1675. Yes. That's cool. Because um, I'm come from Gummersbach, that is in Germany, and they have GM. And, and w while I start with uh, watches, I have um, Check. Oh, GMT 1675 is free. Okay, I take it. But didn't you also have one with like sub 5513 or something? Or your wife had a car with a... Uh, my friend has a car, sub 5513. That is insane. Yes, because it's also close to our uh, city in Siegburg. We have SU, you know, and SU, <laughs> you use then B and uh, SUB and 5513, you know. That's cool. Yeah. What kind of 1675 do you have? This is a Mark II with a very... Uh, uh, yellow pa patina dial and I use um, a black insert, black fat font insert to um, then, then you, you emphasize it a little bit more to have the, the yellow patina yes. I think. Huh? Yes. What insert do you prefer if you have to choose between Pepsi and the, the black one? It depends on the dial and on the day you know. Uh, uh, 1675 GMT is you can um, with the insert you can change a lot of uh, style. True. Yeah. I have also a Fuchsia Nice. And uh, you can use a, a jeans blue or a, a, a um, cherry, you know. So Funny thing about those Fuchsia inserts, I, I remember not even all too long ago, I think four or five years ago, people were coming in in the shop saying my uh, Pepsi bezel discolored. Mm -hmm. It turned into pinkish. I think yeah. it's a little bit gay. I want a new insert. Can you throw mine oh. away? Oh. And these days a Fuchsia insert is going for? Uh, seven, eight thousand euros. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's Imagine how many thousands of euros ended up in the trash. Yeah. In and the end, 8,000 euro for a piece of aluminium, it's not cheap. Yes, yes, yes. And But the taste is changing. Uh, five, four years ago, it was gay, <laughs> for were pink, but now it's cool. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And I really like the condition of the dial. It has, yeah. still has that grainy finish. Yes. What you often see over the years, the dial has a little bit of blemishes or oil yeah. from the movement coming onto the dial. But this dial is just perfect. Very nice example. I can uh, see you wearing this uh, often because it's a perfect watch that fits your uh, style, in my opinion. Yes, thank you, thank you. But also, uh, if you have a GMT, you have to uh, a gold GMT. <laughs> Oof. This one is a gold nice. GMT. It's from '91. Uh, Do you prefer to wear this on a leather strap? Um, I have also the gold strap, but uh, I have uh, put the leather strap now to wear it on for my uh, on a suit. So yeah, it's a little bit more toned down. Yes, but I love the color of the bezel insert, though it matches perfect with the alligator strap. Yes, and the bezel is a little bit brownish. So very nice. So this is still tritium. So it's the nineties. Ninety one. Yes. One six seven one eight. Right. Yes. Yes. What would you say you like more on a gold GMT? The nipple dial configuration, so the earlier 16758 or 16758-8, or the big plots? No, I, 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 if I have uh, uh, find a nice um, with nipple dial, it's also very nice because the nipple dial, is, I think, is very special and looks uh, more vintage than this, uh, this uh, big plots. But I like the big plots too because it makes it a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more of so, a cool guy yes, watch. Yes, yes. Nice example, and it's nice to see these watches are still very affordable if you compare it to a modern GMT, yes. which is way less elegant in my opinion. But these are priced uh, like beginning of 20s, 20,000? Uh, with, yes, with, bracelet, with the bracelet. With bracelet, it's around, they start 26, 28. So, yes. Very nice piece. Okay, what I have, I have, this is... <laughs> This one I buy yes, uh, last year <laughs> at uh, Rolex because uh, uh, I want I, I like the green, you know. But did you get it new at retail? Yeah, I, I get it new at retail. So you have some good connections. No, it's only this was because I go in and I say I want this because uh, uh, and I I go to the um, the retailer and say I want this and after three times he gave me give me that because he was annoyed by you. 
What? He was annoyed by you. Yes. He thought, oh, again, this Vietnamese guy, you know, give him, give him the watch. <laughs> yeah, give him the but watch. But these go for double retail now, right? Uh, yes. It's because it's, it's around 6,000 euro, isn't it? Um, retail, I think it's 5.3 five, or 5.5. Five. Yeah, and they go around 11, 12,000 yes, euros. Yes. Well, of course, green, you can never go wrong with Rolex. Yes. Uh, it's a very nice watch, but 41 millimeters, in my opinion, for an Oyster Perpetual it's is... It's Oyster Perpetual on steroids. Green color is very, very appealing. Um, and it's a well-made watch, you know, in modern Rolex watches, it's, yes. it's good quality, uh, but for me it lacks the charm a little bit. Yes, but uh, it's, uh, I, I like that Rolex now uh, produce watches that are cheap in the retail, you know, yeah. for, uh, for, you can wear it a fashion, you know, with other colors, blue, yellow and something else. Yeah, so the Oyster Perpetual line they added last year is for me really a relief because you have all these colors for, of course, us vintage aficionados. Yes. We resemble the, the Stella dials yes. with the yellow one being very nice, in my opinion. Oh, very the nice. red one is cool, but the green one is the easiest to wear. It's a very classic yes. piece. And you like green. <laughs> and I love green. Yes. Have you seen my boxer short? Yesterday, yes. Yes, yeah, yesterday, of course, in the hotel room, of course. <laughs> um, now, yeah, we we go to the. Uh, this is uh, more uh, now. I think in this uh, new years, um, in this year, AP has come very, very fast. It's going well, huh? Yeah, AP. But, yeah, yeah, they explode. So, uh, but I, I think this was uh, at this time when I buy this, I think it was a, a, a good alternative to a Patek. Do a uh, Patek uh, seven uh, five 57, seven, 12. 57 12. 57 12, yeah. yeah. Because this is also with dual time and power reserve, and power reserve, yes, and date function, and date function, and and uh, cheaper than the less, you know. Uh, Such a half. cool watch, yes. I love to wear the Udmar Piquet with the blue dials, especially when they're complicated because the dial design of this watch yeah. first strike me as really uncomfortable. Because it's so busy, you know, and, too and the dial is blue, yeah. you have white, you have red accents. But I start to enjoy it more and more. Same goes to say for the 5712, for yes. example. And this is a quarter of the price of a 5712. Yes. So that's a good thing too. <laughs> yes, so, so but it's an it's, it's, it's AP with complication and uh, blue dial. So it's, I think... If you have to choose the Royal Oak yes. or the Nautilus, what kind of Gerald Genta guy are you? I am more AP. Royal Oak? Yes, Royal Oak. We're on the same side. Good answer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we can, we can, <laughs> now we can pass on to the okay. next watch. <laughs> Otherwise, this was the end of the video, huh? Yeah. Um, this one is, yeah. You need a Submariner in your uh, collection. And now I use <laughs> a Jubilee. Uh, Unconventional <laughs> bracelet choice. Yes, yeah. I love the Jubilee on the Submariner, but yes. every time I post it for fun, for example, yeah. the people, people say, oh my God. <laughs> start to make fun of it. Yes. Which is actually odd because, you know, back in the days when the 1680 was launched, this watch is probably a, a late 70s, right? 78, yes. something like that. Back in the days, you know, if you prefer the Jubilee bracelet, the Rolex dealer would put a Jubilee bracelet on a Submariner. Yes. But it's a cool example, a Mark III inlay. Yes. And the 1680 for me is a still watch that's pretty much undervalued if you compare it to the Maxi Dials 5513, for example. Or you know? for the uh, for the GMT also. You know, you know the time where uh, the 1680 was the most expensive, then 5513, then uh, GMT, and now it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, now it's GMT is the most expensive. But the case is still very strong. Yes. Uh, and what I like about this uh, bezel that it's slightly faded. Good example of a 1680. Thank you. And the last one is, uh, maybe if you know, it's a normal Explorer. Oh! Not normal. normal. Not normal. Not really <laughs> normal. 14270. You know, I made a big mistake on this watch once <laughs> because I didn't sell the numerals 3, 6 and 9 with black. Okay. This is, uh, this is called the Blackout. So the three, Blackout, right? Blackout, yes. When was it produced? Uh, 90, uh, E-serial and N-serial. Uh, 99, uh, 90 and 91. Okay, so the early production of the 14270. Yes, yes. So Just only around a half year they produced that. Instead of the white paint in the 3, 6 and 9, it's, uh, it's black paint. They call it the blackout. Yes. And it is a way steeper price tag. I believe uh, they go for 25k or something right now, full yes. set. Full set 25k, yes. Uh, I sold mine for uh, 5,000 euros because I didn't notice. You know, uh, 
I, I, ha um, I have uh, seen on uh, the internet, I searched a watch uh, um, and on the, on the picture was a blackout, you know? Not this, what well, a blackout. And I drive to this guy, I, I take it, it was for uh, 4,000 euro, I take it and it was a white one. He has only took the picture from Google and used it for ah. that. And uh, I was thinking it was a blackout, but it was only a normal one. Damn, that's bad luck. Yeah. Very cool watch. I like the, those watches. Like, if you know, you know. Yeah. If you show this watch to 90% of the people, they will just see a 14270. Yes. They think it's a cool watch, but it's nothing special. But if you know, you know. And in many years, this might be a big difference when it's uh, regarding the collectability, as it's only produced for like 12 months. Cool piece, and the 36 millimeter, of course, uh, is the sweet spot for me, yes. especially on, uh, on clean dials like this. Very nice example, Kui. Thank you. Thank you for showing me these watches. What do they drink in Vietnam often? Uh, white wine. Do you have some in the in the fridge? Yes. Let's grab some. Okay. Thank you so much, Queen. Thank you. To be Good here. to have you here. Make sure you check out all our videos on the KOV channel. We're happy to do more watch talks and more collection reviews with more interesting people than Queen. Uh, no, just kidding, my friend. <laughs> really, I love you and I love the collection. Thank you all for checking. Make sure you subscribe, comment in the comment section what watch you enjoyed the most. What's your favorite piece? My favorite piece is the... Also because of the emotional value probably. Yes. The watch I like the most is the 1675 because to me it really links the watch yes. to you, yes. especially because of the number plate. Uh, however, it's uh, also one of the watches that got my love for vintage watches going back when I was 14 or something. I just enjoyed the Pepsi bezel, you know? 20 years ago, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> We're done here. Thank you for watching. <laughs>